and welcome back to the another episode of daily news quiz analysis for IAS prelims 2025. It is 14th November today and in this video we are going to discuss various types of questions which are related to your prelims exam. You know before we will start our discussion I would like to give you brief about this video so that you will get more connected with it. You know almost every day we upload this video on our YouTube channel. In this we discuss three types of questions. The first set of questions which we discuss here are taken from the current affairs. We take up the most important articles from the newspapers. We break them down and derive the preliminary based questions from those articles so that it will give you the idea how the questions may actually come in the exam. So in this way it helps you in preparing very well for your uh, prelims exam it gives you the idea what was in the news and it becomes a kind of news analysis for you and also it helps you to get the idea how the questions may actually be asked from those news articles it briefs you about that after discussing the questions related to the current affairs we shift our approach towards the static portion where we discuss a static topic you know we started with Indian polity and right now we are discussing the fundamental rights. You know our approach is to you know our approach is to discuss every topic how discreet that may be in this uh, in our videos. So right now we are discussing the fundamental rights and we are discussing the writs associated with the fundamental rights. So today we are going to discuss a topic here and derive a question on that so that it will give you the idea that how questions can be asked from such discrete topics. You know after we will discuss the questions with re related to, with respect to the current affairs and the static portion we will shift our approach towards the last part of our discussion where we will discuss few previous year questions and we will try to get the idea uh, you know how the questions actually come in the exam and what can be the ways and methods we can apply to solve those questions and what we can get uh, the information what information we can get from those questions which we can implement in our upcoming exams. So this is in nutshell about the video which we are going to discuss here. Now without any delay let us start our discussion by looking at the question number one here. Let us see what does it say. It say it is about with reference to the article 142 of the Indian Constitution consider the following statements. You know if you would had read today's newspaper Trust me, you would have not gone through this article anywhere. Maybe if you would have read in detail, then maybe you would have seen it. So you can ask me a question, sir, why we had brought this question with respect to article 142 here? You know, the answer to this question is the Supreme Court's order with respect to the bulldozer action. As Supreme Court sets uh, breaks as the articles, as the, the uh, article was uh, you know named as Supreme Court sets breaks on bulldozer culture. So what is the issue here? You know in our country uh, you would, usually it is associated with the Uttar Pradesh and other nearby states that whenever there was any uh, uh, you know anybody involved in the communal uh, violence you know what does the authorities do? they will pick up the prime suspect of that communal violence and they will demolish the properties. So with respect to this, the Supreme Court has set breaks on that because according to the Supreme Court, you know, there is no such law which gives the authorities the permission to demolish the uh, properties, to demolish the buildings of the accused. There is no such law. And in response to this, the administration says that we only demolish those properties which are illegally built. but to come with the Supreme Court countered it as you know if you have to demolish those properties which are illegally built then you should demolish every property which is uh, which are illegally built in that range but you are uh, targeting a, a special you are targeting specific person there. So this is very much against the article 21 which gives right to shelter you know in a family in a building there is not only one person living uh, you know his parents are living his uh, sister his brothers his whole family is living in a particular building. So suppose if any person is accused of any any communal disturbance then we cannot you know do we cannot demolish his property and we cannot you know get, we cannot put that pressure on every member of the family. So with respect to this the Supreme Court has set up the guidelines which the authorities should follow. 
if they have to demolish the property. And what are those guidelines? In you know, with respect to this judgment, we should understand one thing. With respect to a person who is involved in the in the communal violence or any other crime, his property cannot be uh, demolished. These are the about the demolition of the properties. These are only those properties which are illegally built. So with respect to those uh, properties which are illegally built, the Supreme Court has given some guidelines and which we need to understand here. So let's see what are those guidelines. First of all, when first guideline, whenever the administ administration has to go for the demolished, uh, demolition, they have to give the 15 days notice. मतलब कि जब ये डिमोलिशन के लिए जाएंगे एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन किसी प्रॉपर्टी को देखेंगे विच इज इलीगली बिल्ड देन दे हैव टू गो व्हेन दे वांट टू डू द डिमोलिशन ऑफ दैट प्रॉपर्टी दे हैव टू गिव द 15 डेज नोटिस विद रिस्पेक्ट टू दैट मतलब कि ओनर को 15 दिन का नोटिस देना है कि हम इसको डिमोलिश कर रहे हैं सो यू हैव टू टेक एक्शन विद रिगार्ड टू दैट तो उस उन पंद्रह दिन में क्या हो सकता है दैट ओनर मे बी मे बी ही विल गो टू द कोर्ट एंड आस्क फॉर द स्टे और ही विल गिव द रीजन वाई दिस प्रॉपर्टी इज इलीगली बिल्ड दियर इफ द एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन इज सेटिस्फाइड विद हिम दे विल विदड्रॉ इफ दे आर नॉट सेटिस्फाइड विद हिम देन दे विल फर्दर प्रोसीड द एक्शन देन द अनदर गाइडलाइन इज फाइ आइडेंटिफाई द इलीगल स्ट्रक्चर फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल दे हैव टू आइडेंटिफाई द इलीगल स्ट्रक्चर देन you reasons why you are uh, demolishing that give the reasons why you are going to demolish the property there after that here this uh, you know if they are giving this reasons why they are demolishing the property then they have to hear the accused person why he has built this property there why this illegal property is there after that there should that uh, the reason given by the accused it should be recorded very well you know for the court proceedings if the courts will ask it, those recordings should be there after that uh, they, they after hearing that uh, argument given by the accused it is up to the authority whether they will agree to not demolish it or they will go for the demolition after that they will give again 15 days notice to the person where he may approach the supreme he may approach the courts where he can get the stay order for this demolition after giving this uh, you know 15 days notice when they will go for the demolition when they will go for to when they will go to demolish the uh, uh, property what they will do they have to record they have to uh, when they are demolishing the property they will have to record the video so these are the guidelines which uh, they will have to record the video so these are the guidelines which the supreme court gave with respect with respect to the demolition of the properties with respect to the action you know bulldozer action so in this article what we did we learned first of all if anybody is accused of any crime with respect to the uh, communal disturbance or any other his property cannot be demolished you know bulldozer action can can't be taken against him bulldozer actions can only be taken against those properties which are illegally built so this is uh, what this article was about so what is the connection here with respect to article 142 here in this uh, uh, you know discussion in this case the supreme court invoked article 142 where they get this extraordinary power to do the justice now to understand uh, uh, this article 144 more in detail we have to solve this question and get more idea about it let us see what does the question say it says with reference to article 142 of the indian constitution consider the following statements first of all it empowers the supreme court to pass orders necessary for doing complete justice in any uh, cause or matter pending before it 100% correct if it seems to supreme court they have to uh, do the complete justice they can use article 142 with respect to that they may, they can invoke this article and do the complete justice statement second it can be used to override any existing law including constitutional provisions to ensure justice totally incorrect it can't uh, go in it can't use uh, this uh, in which they will go ag extra constitutional they will go against the constitutional provisions so statement 2 is incorrect statement 3 it has been used by the supreme court to issue order orders for public welfare such as environmental protection and social justice 100% correct similarly in this case where the properties were getting demolished by the authority as it was criticized as you know it was uh, criticized as the authorities are misusing its power Mis you know they are 
the, it is a uh, you know it is spons it is state sponsored violence this bulldozer action it was criticized as state sponsored violence so here uh, to take the social issue the supreme court came up they invoked article 142 and they uh, you know rejected this uh, they ended this bulldozer action so with this now the correct answers to this question with respect to article 142 are statement 1 and statement three only and from the options we given below the correct option would be option b so with this i hope you had understood the question itself article 142 itself you had got the basic gist of article 142 and also you had got what was in the news today now with this let's move to the another question and try to solve that question is about which of the following Here the question says which of the following authorities is primarily responsible for resolving disputes arising from splits within recognized national political parties in India? You know, you may ask me, sir, why we had brought this question uh, here about the splits in the national political parties? It is because of the split in national party, uh, national Congress party, which uh, was headed by Shra Sharad Pawar. and you know this party split and if some faction of this party went to the ajit power and some faction of this party went to the sharad power now with respect to this who gets the symbol of the party who gets the you know all that stuff related to the party who solves this issue so that is what was in the news article and here the article itself says the supreme you know first it was solved by the you know after first we will solve this question then i can express it more detailed so here the, it it is this conflict you know according with respect to this question which of the following authority is primarily responsible for resolving disputes arising from splits with an recognized national political party is election commission of india you know with respect to the sharad pawar's party national Cong national congress party you know nationalist congress party sorry with respect to the nationalist congress party there was a split and election commission of india decided who will get the who will get the symbol and that and this is expressed in para 15 of election symbol order a, there are given few tests for example organizational strength and legislative strength and with respect to that it was the ajit powers sab faction which got the uh, election symbol and uh, other stuffs related to that now the sharad power he went to the supreme court with respect to this to have a overlook on this decision and uh, supreme court he argued that if uh, ajit power has got the symbol by in his manifestos he is using his pictures and all that so with respect to this the supreme court uh, uh, ordered ajit power's faction that they should stand on their legs and they should not do such things but still the case is in the supreme court here what was important for you it is that what do you need to know about when there is any split in the national political party who is the authority which solves that conflict it is the election commission of india so with this i hope you had understood the question itself and the topic which was in the news after that there is another article let us see another question let us see that it is about the with reference to article 82 of the indian constitution consider the following statements you know it is about the delimitation uh, of the constituencies so here we need to know about there was an article in the newspaper today it was uh, written by probably by the spokesperson of dmk in tamil nadu uh, dmk party in tamil nadu you know he he gave a great discussion there was a great discussion about the issues related to the delimitation you know in our constitution it is it was earlier mentioned under article 82 that there should be delimitation of constituencies of the constituencies for lok sabha and state legislative assemblies after every you know after every census you know but there was one issue here you know at the same time the government wanted the states to corrupt the population and they gave this that uh, we should not uh, you know population should be curbed there should be uh, you know uh, this uh, uh, replacement rate should be maintained but you know here with respect to the delimitations you know what happened that by every census the population used to increase but at the same time when this population used to increase but it was very much 
disproportional. You know, in the southern states, uh, the population was, uh, they tried, they controlled the population, they were doing very best in that. But in the northern states, the, they did not control the population. You know, the replacement rate was different in the northern states, but in the southern states, the replacement rate was, they reduced the replacement rate. So it eventually impacted the representation as the, you know, representation is di di directly proportional to the population of the states, to the population of the constituencies, to the population of the states you know the northern states would definitely get more representation with respect to the southern states which the southern states don't like because they feel that they are doing best in curbing the population and they should have been rewarded for that but unfortunately before without you know even not get they are not even getting the reward but they are getting punished for that if you know, if the sense, if the delimitation would be conducted, they will get lesser representations as compared to those states who had not controlled the population. So they went to the uh, authorities, uh, they, they went to the, uh, you know, the then government in 1976 when 42nd Amendment was brought in. And uh, under that amendment act, the del delimitation was, you know, cancelled for 25 was paused for 25 years. It happened in 1971 when the delimitation was paused for uh, 25 years. Then in 2020, 2001, another delimitation was conducted, but still the issue remained the same. Uh, you know, in, you know, in 2001, the main purpose of the delimitation was to give the higher representation to the scheduled castes and scheduled tribes. Now here, what does the author uh, of this uh, uh, of this article wants to say that you know delimitation will definitely harm you know if this del if this uh, delimitation is done it will definitely harm this uh, southern states they are performing well with respect to the gdp they are contributing well with respect to the gdp of the country they are performing well with respect to curbing the population of the country irrespective of praising them irrespective of giving the benefits to the, those uh, states they are getting punished if the representation is increased for the northern states as compared to them so he proposed few ideas with respect to it and and those ideas, one of them was that it should be further, uh, uh, pro, this delimitation should be further freezed for 25 years, or, you know, it should be totally, this delimitation should be totally cancelled. And further, he, uh, another was that uh, there should be, you know, uh, there should be, uh, you know, abolition, there should be abolition of delimitation, or there should be increase in, uh, uh, his another, uh, you know, what he said that, you know, the, uh, the it, there should be abolition of the concurrent list, and you know, uh, and also in the union list, the the, uh, the items should be transferred to the state list. All the items in the concurrent list should be transferred to the state list, and also in the union list, all the items should be transferred to the state list, except a few currency, defense, and external. Uh, uh, external affairs so these should be kept with the union list so he actually wanted that what was uh, pre article 370 same should be given to the all states so he gave some recommendations with respect to the delimitation according to him which can curb the issues arising from the delimita delimitation so i guess this is in nutshell about the article itself now let's try to understand article 82 more and get more idea about it here the question says, with reference to Article 82 of the Indian Constitution, consider the following statements. First statement, it deals with the delimitation of the constituencies for Lok Sabha and the State Legislative Assembly, correct? Second statement, it mandates a delimitation exercise after every census, 100% correct. It mandated delimitation exercise after every census, but uh, under the uh, 42nd Constitutional Amendment Act, it was paused for 21 years and further it has been paused till 2026 uh, census will be conducted. Then third, it empowers the election commission to conduct the delimitation process. No, it is not election commission which conducts the delimitation process, but it is delimitation uh, commission which conducts the delimitation process. So here, with respect to this question, the correct statements are statement one and statement two only. With this, let's move to the another question and try to solve that. Here, the question is about which of the following are the primary source of funds for municipal corporation in India? The reason for this question is that, uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, there was a report given by the RBI that the municipal corporation tax revenue share has uh, uh, is rising in recent years. 
so here we need to know what are the sources of the municipal corporation what are the sources of the funds for the municipal corporation property tax is 100% correct this is the source of the funds for the municipal corporation central government grants uh, state government grants 100% correct user charges and fees 100% correct for example water charges uh, electricity and all that stuff so here with respect to this question the correct statements are all the four statements and from the code given below the correct code would be option D. With this, let's move to the another question and try to solve that. Here the question is about the Booker Prize. You know, it is the, uh, the you know, here this year the British writer Harvey, she got the Booker Prize. She won the Booker Prize. She had given, she had published a book named Orbital. So for that book, she got this Booker Prize. You know, about Booker Prize, we need to know a few things before solving this question you know this booker prize is given to the author who writes in the english who first of all his work should be in the english who, who writes a novel it should be fictional novel second third it should be published in either uk or ireland if these categories are followed by an author he writes in english it is uh, 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 a fictional novel and it is published in UK or uh, Ireland then that person will get the Booker Prize. So let's try to solve this question. It says it is awarded annually for a single work of fiction 100% correct. Second it is awarded to authors of any nationality provided the book is originally written in English 100% correct. You know it, this provision came after 2014 before 2014 this uh, this uh, you know this was only given to those pe people belonging to the Commonwealth countries. But after 2014, it can be given to any person, uh, you know, but he should publish it in the UK and it should be written in English. And also it should be published in UK or Ireland, written in English, and it should be a novel, a fictional novel. Third statement, it is awarded by the Booker Prize Foundation, 100% correct. So with respect to this question, the correct statements are all the three statements and uh, correct option would be option. D. With this, let's move to the another question and try to solve that. Here, the question is about the Pradhan Mantri Ujwala Yojana was launched with the primary objective of, you know, why this is in news because there was a report on its achievements in the impact of the Pradhan Mantri Ujwala Yojana in Jammu and Kashmir. So, we need to know basic about the Pradhan Mantri Ujwala Yojana. You know about it, it was launched in 2016. We should know that. It was launched by the Ministry of Petroleum and Natural Gas. You know, the main aim was to target women and poor and marginalized sections of the society of the rural households. So let's try to solve that. First question, providing free LPG connections to all households in India, totally incorrect, not all households in India. Second, promoting the use of clean cooking fuel in rural households, 100% correct. Third, reducing air pollution in urban areas, it was not the primary focus of it. Encouraging the adoption of renewable energy resources, neither it is the primary focus of it. So here with respect to this question, the correct statement is option B. With this, let's move to the another question and try to solve that. You know, by solving this question, we had solved all the questions related to the current affairs, uh, which we had brought in today's discussion. Now we will shift our approach towards the static portion, to do, towards the static topic. And today's uh, static topic is the writ of certiorari. So let's solve a question with respect to it get, and get more idea about it. It says a writ of certiorari is a judicial order issued by a higher judiciary to a lower court or tribunal to review the legality of a decision or order of a lower court or tribunal. Let's keep it here. Let's mark it. Uh, let's uh, encircle it. And we'll come to this again. Option B, order the release of a person detained illegally, totally incorrect. Option C, command a public official to form a public duty, totally incorrect. Option D, direct a lower court to transfer a case to another court. You know, this uh, certiorari, it is very much uh, related to it, but it is not to only to the lower courts, but to uh, other the uh, also to the tribunal, tribunals or those authorities which have the judicial power. So we can say option D is correct here. It is correct, but it is not complete. If we will, uh, we, if the, why this, uh, you know, uh, option D, it is correct, but not complete because it is not only to the lower courts, but also other uh, quasi-judicial bodies too. 
Coming back to the option A, it review the legality of a decision or order of a lower court or tribunal. This is also correct. You know, the main purpose of this is to review the legality or, or the decision of or order of a lower court or tribunal. You know what? If the higher courts have to review it, they will definitely transfer it. And one thing important about the certiorari is it is done after the after the judgment is given. So with respect to this question, the correct statements are statement A and statement D. If you have to choose which is more correct, I would prefer option A or option D. Uh, I would definitely prefer option A or option D because it is more elaborate and it defines it more uh, in a more best in a more detailed manner. So with this, let's move to the another question and try. Let's move to the last part of our discussion and let's solve the questions from the previous year question book. Here the first question is it is about the Lahore session. It says the Lahore session of Indian National Congress is very important in history because Statement A, the Congress passed a resolution demanding complete independence. 100% correct, nothing wrong with the statement. The rift between extremists and moderates were resolved in this session. No. Third statement, a resolution was passed rejecting the two-nation theory in, the se in that session. Totally incorrect. So with respect to this question, the correct statement is option A. The Congress passed a resolution demanding complete independence in their Lahore session. Coming to the last question of today's discussion, it says the it is about the Rowlett Act aimed at. What was it aimed at? First, compulsory economic support to war efforts, no. Uh, suppress of, suppression of Khilafat movement, no. D, imposition of restrictions on freedom of press, totally incorrect. Option B, imprisonment without trial and summary procedures for trial, 100% correct. So with respect to this question, the correct statement is option B. So with this, we complete today's discussion. I hope you would like the video. I hope you would share it with your friends. And I definitely hope you would subscribe the channel. And please do communicate with us. Do write in the comments what else should we bring for you. Thank you for staying with me. Thank you very much. Have a nice day.